Let's go ahead and start with the voicemail. Hey, Ballers, this is Joey from L.A. Uh, I bought the UDK this year for the first time. Been listening to the show for a few years. Um, I wanted to know how to balance tier-based drafting and overall rankings. Because uh, if there's a big tier break and the next tier is a lot lower level running back, how do I balance that if there's a much higher ranked wide receiver in the overall ranking still available? Thanks. This is such a great question. I'm so happy we have this. Good job, Brooks, and good job, caller. Um, <laughs> look, we uh, if if you haven't been in the ultimate draft kit, we, so we've got our two, top 200. Everybody loves having a top 200 rankings. We've got a really important tutorial video that you can watch <laughs> where I tell you to print it out, crumple it up, and throw it away. Everyone wants the overall rankings. Everyone wants the quarterbacks and the wide receivers and the running backs all sorted in so that it's nice and easy because then you look, and this guy's so much higher than that guy. So clearly he's the right pick, but this caller has is nailing the the question of okay, so how do I successfully draft in my draft? And it's not a matter of well, I, there's a there's a tier two wide receiver, but a tier three running back. Which tier is better? This is about roster construction. This is about when you're in your draft in your league. Do you need two running backs and two wide receivers and a flex? Do you need three wide receivers? Do you have two flex? Is it two QB? When you draft tier-based, positionally separated, you're constructing your roster in a way where you go, I want to make sure, whatever it is that works for your league, I want two stud running backs, and then I want to load up on wide receivers. Or I want to, you know, if I start wide receiver heavy, I'm going to need more running backs. How many quarterbacks are left in, in tiers that I like? Look at each position totally separately from one another, and as you go, when you come onto the clock or you're close to, you know, when you're a couple picks away, look at your roster and say, what position do I need? Then go look at the tiers and decide independently. The top 200 lists, here's why they're bad. Because the difference when you sort all players in between a wide receiver and a running back that are 15 spots apart are possibly nothing. There, you know what I mean? and so, But it's so enticing to say, this guy's so much higher, I've got to take him. Take the position that your team needs based on what you're seeing in the tiers. Yeah. Does that make I, sense? It makes perfect sense. And at the same time, I understand why, I mean, we get more requests for like getting the top 200 into the app, and people want the top 200 for the exact reason people ask the question, please tell me what position to draft in each round of my draft. It's the same reason, right? You want to know, do I go running back, wide receiver, running back, running back, wide receiver, tight end, quarterback? You'd love to have a template like that. And sure, you can draft that way if you want to. It's just not the best way to draft. We want you to win. It's not optimal. In your league. So we're doing our best to help you. And I think that that's the the, the tier-based separated position approach. Yeah, and that and that's why we, like, we did not have a top 200. In the Ultimate Draft Kit when we launched the Ultimate Draft on Kit. On principle. Like a couple of years ago. On principle. So that's why there's a disclaimer video in there so that Jason can say what he just said to you again to reiterate. We do have it, though, if you want it. Yes. And you need to use oh, it. <laughs> the Ultimate Draft Kit has everything you need. <laughs> hey, guess what? Click that subscribe button, and I might send you something in the mail. Maybe. You should do it.